to speak about this common invisible barriers which comes in a way that blocks us from receiving the blessings of the Lord. We, though we, we want to see the blessings, though we are praying for it, but we are unable to we are unable to see it, we are unable to see it manifested, we are unable to walk in it, and we are still struggling. Though the though the Lord though the Lord on the cross has finished his work on the cross. He has finished the work on the cross. The work of the work of the Lord is finished. He has completed the work. All that we need in life is uh, is already answered in the on the cross. Hallelujah. Whatever we need in life, there's nothing that the, the Lord has to do. We all we need to uh, appropriate it and uh, appreciate it and appropriate it and uh, and receive it into our lives. Unless and until we don't understand and comprehend what we have, what the Lord has provided, what God has made made possible, that which was impossible was made possible through the cross of Jesus, hallelujah, through that sacrifice, uh, through that very sacrifice on that cross, Jesus dying on that cr cross uh, is, is not just a mere uh, a sacrifice and that we celebrated on a good Friday and we, and we have that passion, uh, uh, that's a celebration for these 40 days and then have it on, on a good Friday and we sit and uh, contemplate it on, on a good Friday and then, then the Easter comes and uh, it's all over. But in, in reality, we have not really understood what God has provided for us, what God has made it for us on that cross, what He has given to us, what was the divine exchange on that cross. So today there are, there are many things... Uh, there are many things that we, we need to understand why God, though God wants to bless us, we are unable to receive it and we are unable to appropriate it into our lives. So I want to talk about the, the common, common invisible barriers which we, fail to, which we fail to understand and which is blocking our healings in our lives. The first one is the, first one is the ignorance of God's word. Ignorance of God's word and God's will. Because if we do not know, if we, if we are ignorant of God's word and what is the will of God for us, then though the, though the, though the blessing is there, we are unable to appropriate it. Hallelujah. In, 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 in Isaiah 5.13, in Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13, he says, therefore, this is he talking about the children of Israel. He said, therefore, my people will go into exile Therefore, my people, God is telling my people will go into exile. Why? Because lack of understanding. Wow. They will go into exile because lack of understanding. Though God is almighty and all powerful, he, he cannot stop them from going into exile because they do not have the understanding of who he is in their lives. And this is exactly that is happening in our lives. Hosea, Hosea 4.6 My people are perishing because lack of knowledge, lack of understanding. Today why we are struggling in our lives, why we are going through this strife, why we are going through so much of uh, that we are literally, uh, we are literally become victims at the hands of the situations, hands of the circumstances, that we can easily break, that we can easily lose our peace, uh, lose our joy, so easily. But the, Jesus said, the peace that I have given you is not what the world has given you. The peace that I have given you is not what the world has given you. It's my peace. This my peace. This is the peace. This is of God Almighty. The peace of Jesus is instilled in your heart. But if you, if you, if you don't take, what is that? If you don't understand, what is that peace? That in the midst of all the storms, He is in you and He is for you. That no matter what the storms are, no matter what the problems are, it, the problems and the situations does not determine, does not determine your life. It does not determine who you are. Hallelujah. The situation does not determine your life. Hallelujah. It is God who has determined, God who has decided, God who has said that you are mine, you are my people, you are my children. That is the truth. That is the reality. And if that reality is fixed in our hearts, we will have that peace. We, 
will have that peace in our hearts and no one and nothing can shake us nothing can separate us from that love from that peace from that grace because it is the word of god says increase in the grace of god what is the grace of god the grace of god is god almighty in in his word hallelujah god and his word are one and he is he dwells in his word he lives in his word and his word is it should be in our hearts and if that word is in my heart i cannot be shaken and i cannot be moved that's why he says god almighty has set has set everything in place for us has given us everything that we need in life he has provided for us he has taken care of every need of us by dying on that cross hallelujah he has taken care of everything by he dying on that cross jesus has taken everything that is that 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 separates you from from who from your identity in god hallelujah in in on that cross he, god almighty has united you to himself god reconciled you to himself and he has made you one with him you and god are one today through that cross god when when jesus died on the cross the the veil was torn from the top to the down hallelujah the veil that separated you from god and from and the veil that separated you that divided you that kept you away from god was torn from the top to the bottom hallelujah nothing could separate you now from god hallelujah Amen. there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in christ jesus Amen. you are passed from death to life you have entered into the holies of holies now you are seated with christ in the heavenly places See, this is the word. This is the, if, if we do not have this word in our hearts, if I do not have this word in my heart, I can easily despair. I can be despondent. I will lose my heart so easily. I can break my heart so easily. And any situation comes, any storms comes, and there is a lack. There is a lack coming in my way. There is a problem that is coming in my way. I can, I, I can easily fall. I can easily, I can easily be uh, uh, succumb to that situations. Hallelujah. So today I want you all to understand and today this is my prayer and this is this is my prayer for every one of you hallelujah and this is my prayer for for even as I pray I pray this for my own self because there's so much that we need to understand of what God has provided I next week I may I I will I will speak to you all about the the the, the exchange that has happened on the cross but today I want you all to understand what uh, what God wants to speak to us why we are why we are being hindered in receiving the blessings that God wants to bless us with hallelujah hallelujah thank you Jesus thank you Jesus so today we need to ask God for forgiveness you know because if he if he uh, god says if you love me if you love me you will keep my commandments john 14 15 he says if you love me jesus says you will keep my commandment you will keep my commandment then i will send my holy spirit who will, why because the holy spirit will will only start living a working in my life when the word of god is in my heart the holy spirit will be empowered only when we have god's word in our hearts in john 10 27 he says my sheep will hear my voice my sheep will hear my voice today whose voice are you hearing today we hear uh, uh, the voice of everyone and anyone and, and we want to please everybody we want to please our parents we want to please our brothers and sisters we want to please our bosses we want to please our uh, the friends around us we want to please everyone but this word is not in our hearts and we get into wrong places wrong uh, wrong uh, with wrong people get into wrong connections and we when and we face strife we face struggles we are we are we we find ourselves so poor and so weak in ourselves we are unable to understand why these problems we go to anybody to anyone at any time any anyone calls anywhere we go we do not hear the voice of god do we do we ask do we ask the lord lord can i go to that place 
Do I ask? Can I? You know, I'm telling you. Without you, we, 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 we cannot take a step without asking. Unless and until the Holy Spirit gives us that comfort and the strength and tells us, yes, you need to go there. You need to speak. You need to hear this. You cannot simply hear anything that comes in your way. You cannot hear anything and cannot speak anything that you want to speak. Because your life is not yours. It belongs to the Lord. Amen. He died in your place. He took your place. He took your sin. He took your shame. He took your curse. He bore your infirmities. He was, he was punished because of you and for me. He was punished in my place and in your place. He paid a price. And if a great price God bought me, if that was a price that God bought me, I cannot own myself at all. I do not have the right over my life. I need to take every step in keeping in light with who God is and that God is with me. That I need to, I need to walk in, in line with His word. I need to walk in, in that is this life or the very thing that I'm going to do is going to please Him. This very hotel that I'm going to go is going to please Him. The very people that I'm going to meet is going to please Him. The very people I'm going to chat with is going to please Him. Because we are ignorant of His word. He says, light has nothing to do with darkness. The world has nothing to do with us. Thank you, Jesus. Today, I've, 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 I've lost everything just to have God in my life. Everything is, everything is taken away. But I cannot take what God has given me is a new what God has given us is very precious. That salvation is very precious. That life is very precious. That life is of God. Eternal God has given us eternal life. And that eternal life is in you and in me. Hallelujah. And you hold it very precious. So I want you all to pray. And ask God for forgiveness. Because we have been ignorant about God's word. Because we have not read his word. Because we have not meditated on his word. We need, because when we do not do that, we are sinning against God. When we do not read his word and meditate on his word and do not give that time to him in his word, we sin against God. That's a sin. Because if you are ignorant of his word, you will do anything and everything that is against his will. Because if you do not have his word in your heart, how will you know what is the will of God? How will I know what is the will of God? Unless I do not read, unless I do not take this word and have this word in my heart, I will never know what is the will of God. If you get into a place of work and the company tells you this is the this is the principles. This is the way the company works. You need to abide by this. This is the time that you have to come and this is the time you have to go. And you have to be in this time, you have to be in this moment. This is the day of your holiday. This is the day you have to work. You, you have to follow this. And you have to be diligent in it and you have to be faithful to it. And how we are faithful to it, how we make sure that we are doing it, and we make sure that we are following it because we know we are going to get salaries. And we are faithful to it. But when it comes to God, we are so lenient. And we are so poor in giving ourselves. And then we, we struggle. Because God is not holy in our lives. God is not being revered in our lives. Not. That's why we can have fights in our houses. We keep fighting with one another. We come into so much of discouragement and disappointment. We lose heart. We lose our mind. We lose our peace. So easily. Anyone comes and says anything, we are gone. We are over. Finished. We burst with anger. We burst with frustrations. We burst with all kind of negative thinkings and negative thoughts. Thank you, Jesus. 
So today I want you all to pray with. I, if I, if I, if I know you can hear. I can hear you all speaking to me. But I will pray this prayer. I will pray this prayer with you all. Hallelujah. Oh God, we acknowledge that in many ways we are ignorant of your word and your will. Through our own faults, oh Lord, tonight we confess this as a we confess this as a sin. We repent of it and we ask you to forgive us and to help us to seek the truth more diligently in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The second, the second point that I want to talk about is unbelief. My brothers and sisters, uh, unbelief is what many of us are struggling with. Because when we go through st uh, strifes and when we go through all the problems and we say that we are praying and when we don't find answers coming into our ways, we find hard to believe that God can answer our prayers. When there is a time of waiting in the presence of God, when there is a, a time where we need to be patient in the presence of God and when God calls us to be patient and to be perseverance and to have perseverance and to persevere, we are unable to, uh, we are unable to persevere, we are unable to be patient and we speak all kind of negative words, unclean words, we speak doubts, we speak unbelief. We speak the very words which are uh, which is uh, which which does not line up with God's word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today we need to understand that God is God and He is holy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We need to repent. We need to repent of this of unbelief in our lives. We need to repent of this. We need to repent. Just close your eyes. Just close your eyes and ask God for forgiveness. For not having the total faith in God. Not trusting in God fully. Having that unbelief in our lives. Though God has forgiven us, though God has healed us, though God has delivered us and set us free so many times in our lives. But when we come into a place where we are struggling in a, in a moment, when we are struggling, with the situation, we find that answers are not coming to our pray, uh, to to the prayers that we are praying, and and we are struggling with it, and we find ourselves with unbelief. Let us ask God for forgiveness. Lord, forgive us for our unbelief, O Lord. As a as a man who bought his son, Lord, help me in my unbelief, O Lord. I want Lord you to increase my faith, O Lord. Help me, O Lord, in my unbelief. That I may not uh, be, be dissuaded, O oh God, with my unbelief, O oh God. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank, you, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The third point, the third point that uh, makes us, uh, that takes us away, that brings a barrier in our lives, uh, the invisible barrier, that is unconfessed sins. Our unconfessed sins. The many of us are having sins which are not confessed. And we think that uh, uh, we, we are just walking around with it and we, when we don't take it seriously in our lives, there is so much of unconfessed sins in our lives. <coughs> Do we confess our sins? And there are many, we, we confess our sins but we do the same thing again and again. In reality, we have not really repented of our sins. We are not truly really sorry of that sin that we have committed. Because a, a confession will come only when we are truly repented. It's not that you are meeting that need that I need to confess. So I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good that I have confessed. It's not feeling good. It's my heart. It's my heart set free. Am I free from that, uh, from that guilt? From that, uh, from that, uh, from, from, from that weakness? Uh, the strife that is inside of me, the anger that is inside of me, the resentment that is inside of me, the hatred that is inside of me, the envy, the envy, the jealousy that others have but I do not have. You cannot stand somebody being good. That unconfessed sin we are struggling in our lives. In Proverbs 28:13, Proverbs. 
28, 13. He who conceals, he who conceals his sin does not prosper. Today many of us are struggling in, in being prosperous, prosperous in our life. Not only in, in finance, in our spiritual life, we are, we are struggling in, in our walk with God. Why? Because we have not confessed our sins to God. We have not. God sees our sins. But He will only convict you of that. But if you, have, if you do not open your heart to God and, and, and really repent of that sin and ask God, Lord, there is pride in me. There is ego in me. There is uh, so much uh, of self-centeredness in me. I'm so self, uh, so self-strong in myself. I, I feel that I am everything. There's so much of, uh, there's so much of, there's so much that we keep in our hearts that we hold it and we do not want to confess to God. There's so much that we have uh, that we do not want to let go. That uh, forgiveness, we cannot forgive, we cannot, we hold on to people, hallelujah. My brothers and sisters, you want to have uh, that freedom in your hearts, you need to confess your sins. You cannot cover your sins, you cannot cover, because if you cover your sins and hold uh, things against people, things uh, that you are, you are struggling in your life, there are many of us are struggling with our, with, our, with, with our weaknesses. We are struggling in our, in our flesh. We are struggling with our flesh. We are struggling to walk in that holiness with God. We are not opened our hearts to the Lord today. I want you to close your eyes. The Holy Spirit will speak to you. The Holy Spirit will convict you of that area of your life which you have still hold, which you are still not confessed, which you are still not holding back, because the Holy Spirit will take you back to every area, to every, to every moment of your life where you have failed God, where you have failed your brother and sister, where you have failed to 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 live that life which is holy and pleasing in the sight of God. It may be your your, your own spouse, your own children. There's so much that we have, we do things which are not right in the sight of God. Hallelujah. Let us, let us look into our lives. Let us look, let us, uh, uh, let us ask the Lord. Holy Spirit, Lord, speak to me, Lord. Lord, I have envy inside of me. I have jealousy inside of me. Lord, my, I, I feel that I'm not loved, so I, I, I feel that, uh, that I, I, I'm not loved enough, so I, I'm unable to, I'm unable to love that person, I'm unable to give myself to that person, because that person he, he does not acknowledge me, he does not acknowledge me, he does not acknowledge me, my love of God, though I love that person, he does not acknowledge my love, so I have that resentment. I have that, uh, uh, that hatred, I have that uh, anger, I, I'm not receiving what I need to receive. So I keep that strife inside of me. My boss, uh, he is, uh, he, I'm doing everything in my company, but my boss is not recognizing me. So I have uh, that hatred towards that boss. I have that hatred towards a colleague who is hating me. I have the hatred towards a person who is next to me, who keeps on nagging at me. So I'm, I'm unable to forgive that person. So I'm, I'm having that sin in my heart. Today, my brothers and sisters, God wants you to overcome. Overcome. The Holy Spirit is given to you. The Spirit of the Lord is with you. Hallelujah. The blood of Jesus is washing, will wash away all your sins and cleanse you of all your sins and purify your heart and make you holy. Because He wants to cleanse your heart and make you holy. Hallelujah. That you will be the pure children of God. Because only those who are pure in heart will see God. Only those who are pure in heart will see God. And they will experience the love of God. As God forgave your sin on that cross, you and I are called to ask God.
Today, Lord, I need you. I need you, oh Lord, in my life. God, my sins I lay at your feet, O oh Lord. I want to confess my sins, O oh Lord. I don't want to hold on to my sins. I want to confess my sins. And I want to repent of my sins and I want to turn to you. And I want my life to be changed completely by the power of your love, O oh God, by the power of your spirit, O oh Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. The fourth point is unforgiveness. That is, uh, again, that is connected. Unforgiveness towards your brothers. Hallelujah. Unforgiveness towards your family members. Hallelujah. This is very, this is the very area where the enemy plays very hard on our lives. Unforgiveness. That we cannot forgive our brother and sister. We, oh, we keep that uh, I owe you in our lives. No? We keep that I owe you. I cannot let, let go of that person. I want to hold that thing against that brother. He has said this like this to me. He spoke like this to me. I cannot uh, forgive him. How can you? When we, uh, you know, I, I'm telling you, I'm dealing, I, have, I have met people who, who bluntly say to my face that we cannot forgive. Because that person has destroyed our lives. That person has hurt us. That person has done so much of harm to us. And they are very blunt in their, self, in their confession. They say we cannot. You know, it's very hard for them to forgive. I'm telling you, my brothers and sisters, God Almighty has forgiven us in Christ Jesus. On that cross, Jesus did not hold anything against us. But he gave himself for us. He said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they are doing. Jesus. Today, you and I are called to, to forgive and to let go of that brother and sister who has done harm in our lives. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Just close your eyes. Bring the brother and the sister who, who, who find it very difficult to forgive. The Lord, Holy Spirit will remind you of that brother and that sister. That brother and sister who has, who has hurt you so much, who has broken your heart, maybe your own spouse, maybe your own children, maybe your own brother, maybe your own mother, maybe your own uh, your father, maybe your own uncle, your aunt, or anybody in your company, your spa, uh, the, the boss, uh, maybe people around you. There are so many who have come in your life uh, and you, you, have, you, have take, you have kept them and you have you not forgiven them, hallelujah. Let the Holy Spirit remind you right now. Let the Lord heal you, hallelujah. Let the Lord give you the grace to let go and to forgive. To let go and to forgive. My brothers and sisters, we do not know tomorrow whether we will have an opportunity. Because if God has given us this day, we need to take hold of this day. Because this day, today is a day of your salvation. Do not hold anything against anyone right now. Let go off. Let your heart be delivered. Let your heart be delivered. I can see many of us, I can see many of my brothers and sisters here who have been broken in their hearts. And if you have somebody whom, who have, whom you have hurt and people have hurt, people have received you maybe have spoken in a very rude manner, maybe very harsh manner to somebody just, to, just because you wanted some, something in your life. You want to have your ways and you do not get what you wanted and you have been hard on somebody. If you have been hard to your, uh, to your colleagues, uh, to your, uh, so, to your uh, uh, subordinates uh, or to the people who are working under you or the people around you in your house, in your family members. Uh, if you have hurt somebody, if you have pained somebody, if you have spoken in a very hard, hard manner, uh, abused somebody, you need to ask God for forgiveness. You need to reach out to that person. Hallelujah. The Lord is here in our midst. The Lord will speak to you right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Do not hold any bitterness inside of you. Do not have anything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 12, verse 15, he says, See to it. See to it that no one falls short of God's grace. 
See to it that no one falls short of God's grace, lest any root of bitterness, any root of resentment, any root of bitterness spring up to trouble you and thereby many be defined. Do not, do not, do not let that grace of God be spurned. Do not let the grace of God fall. Because the grace of God has come to you. The grace of God has come to you, my brothers and sisters. It has come to you to strengthen you, to forgive and to let go. And you need to forgive. And you need, you and I need to walk in love. You and I need to walk in forgiveness. And that's why the, 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 writer, the, the writer in Hebrews is saying, see to it that no one falls short of God's grace. Why? Because if you do not take hold of God's grace, you will fall short of it. And you will have bitterness inside of you. And that bitterness will trouble you. That bitterness will trouble you. And thereby many will be defiled. And that bitterness will lead to defile many others. Many others will also fall into that trap. Jesus. Thank you Lord. So do not take the grace of God for granted. Receive this grace. You need to take that grace of God and help God and, and we need to come and become one with God and to forgive and forgiveness. Because you are called to join with the Lord. Because your spirit has joined with his spirit. So you are called to, to become one with him in forgiving and in loving one another. If your children are if your children are not one with you, you need to become one with them. You need to walk to them and talk to them and speak to them and walk in love with them. Talk to them, hallelujah. Have a relationship with your children. Have a relationship with your wife. If your wife is not speaking to you, you need to walk to your wife. You need to walk to your husband and speak to him. Bring, bring out that love. Speak to them in love. Talk to them in love. Break that yoke of the devil. Break the shackles of the enemy. Hallelujah. Because the, it's the anointing that is in you that shall break the yoke. Hallelujah. It's the anointing that will teach you the word of God says. You need to walk in that anointing. Walk in that grace of God. And walk in that love. Walk in that grace. Hallelujah. And be the person that God is calling you to be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Do not bottle up everything inside of you and hold everything inside of you and say, I'm hurt, I'm broken, I'm lost, I'm this, I'm that, and this, and that, and make your life miserable. But rather choose to walk that extra distance. Rather choose to walk that extra distance to carry that cross. To carry that cross. And walk in love. Holy Spirit, I thank you, Lord. There's a bondage breaking right now. There's a darkness being dispelled right now. The light of Christ is shining right now. Jesus, I give praise. No darkness shall dis no darkness shall rule your houses, your families. Hallelujah. No bondage shall rule your houses and your families. Oh Father, I give the praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, I give you praise. Thank you, Lord. The anointing is upon your life. I feel the anointing right now. I feel the presence of God is all over your life right now. The power of God is upon your life right now. Thank you, Jesus. The fifth point is that we are, if any way, in any way, in any form, if you have indulged yourself in the, in, in the occult, in the occult, hallelujah. If you have involved yourself in the occult, when I say occult, you may you may have gone and seen your horoscope, or you may go and see your palm to you may, might have shown your palm to somebody, or you may go and see every day. You know there is star in the newspaper every day. In, in I seen in Bombay when I was in Bom when I used to be in Bombay, I used to see every week before I was a Christian. I used to see every day my my stars. But the, the best part was the people who are writing the, the stars was a Christian only, hallelujah. But now I know that it is evil, that is against the will of God. 
Hallelujah. You know, I used to work in Abu Dhabi and I used to meet Christians and Catholics and Christians. They used to say, uh, how is your life? Uh, touch wood, everything is good. I said, what? Touch wood? This is superstition. Touch wood, everything is good. I keep my fingers crossed. I know everything will go well. Fingers crossed. I said, wow. So wood is going to save you and the fingers crossed will deliver you. I should confront them. I see families building houses, showing which side should my house should be built, which side should the wall should come, which side should the bathroom should come. And these are Christians who are going and seeing which side should my house, the door should be coming. Involving in all kind of such evil that to think of it is such a it is such a wicked thing, you know. To think of it is such you you breaks your heart. People are involved in watching blah, uh, in, in in horror movies and and uh, watching all kind of rock music, hearing rock music. You know, I'm telling you, these are the things of the evil, the occult. And if you listen to this music, you watch this uh, movies which are which are totally completely evil and horror filled movies. I'm telling you, you your life will be a misery. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is a holy God, and we are called to be holy in His presence. Today we need to ask God for forgiveness. You know, when everything was going well with our families, we, we never turned ourselves to God and we had a life which was totally, completely a lavish life. We were no, not caring about God and everything was going in our way and everything was like a party, wild orgies and parties and dancing and drinking. And when problems come, we sit and cry. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Today we have idols in our lives. I, you know, uh, my neighbor here, I'm talking to you, my neighbor here, he's a Christian. Um, uh, to call him a Christian is a, a, uh, it's a shameful thing for me. When you get inside the house, he's kept a laughing Buddha inside the house. I said, this is for what? This is bringing charm. This will bring good, uh, good, good, goodness inside the house. Chinese charms, laughing Buddha. Some are keeping. They go, they go to countries and they have, they bring souvenirs from those places and they bring all the, all the idols and all the, uh, all the forms of, you know, name them. I've, I have to, I've been to so many houses and I've seen how much, how the evil one is. Uh, Destroying people's lives. Even this neighbor whom I am staying here, the whole life, the whole family is broken. Daughter is a, daughter is a, with another man, and the boy is then in, a, in trouble, and the husband is with somebody, and the wife is in a misery, and they have a laughing Buddha inside, and he's laughing. The devil is laughing inside. We, we, we bring all kind of these things and we say this is, uh, you know, this is good. They don't want to listen. They don't want to ask. You can't go and tell people. That is the problem. We bring anything and everything and we say we want to keep this because this is good. Hallelujah. Shukaya We do not know who we are. That's why, that's why I told you the first point. The ignorance of the word, the ignorance of the word is destroying us. And today, we are, I'm seeing families, families, marriages are, are, are already, already 20 or 30 cases are, today we are just in the February month, we are in the March, already 30 divorce cases have already come into the church, the, the, the priest was telling, there are already 30, 30 marriages I'll come for a divorce. In this whole month, I don't know how many marriages must have happened. Already 30 cases have come for divorce. 
Marriages are happening with so much of fun and so much of affair and so much of dancing and everything, but does not stay, does not remain. Why? No word, no no presence, no glory, no no honor for God. This is all in the flesh. Everything is in the flesh. Hallelujah. All religions are one, you know, this is a common factor. Go make one, anyone goes to anyone's religion and goes and enjoys anyone's uh, uh, family. Uh.